Science says we should all be eating our boogers. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Uh, on Thursdays, we like to think of ourselves as itinerant gardeners who huh. move from place to place in search of heirloom seed questions. And when we find those seed questions, we bring them back to our greenhouse of mm. a cultivation and we plant them in our minds. A cultivation or cultivation? That's a different thing. But cultivation. Uh, yes. We're not cultivating an occult. And then they bloom and blossom and start to grow, and then we prune and prickle them to the point <laughs> where they protrude from uh, our brows, and then I pluck it uh, like I do many other things in between my brows, <laughs> and I present it to you in the, fo in the form of an answer. Wow, I'm uh, so glad I'm here. That's that's amazingly pruned and perfect. Well, Link, I've got one of those seed questions. Right there. Thank you for that. Uh, this one is from Maya. She asks, how do I stop laughing at inappropriate times? Um, I can totally relate to this, Maya or Maya. Um, first of all, I laugh whenever I'm accused of something I didn't do. I don't know why I do that, but I can one up that generalization that is a character flaw of mine with a specific story. And listen, I'm not, I'm not proud of this, but I had a girlfriend in high school and she got horrible news, okay? This, is, it's, this part isn't funny. Um, she found out that one of her friends had passed away, okay? But actually the way she found out is because um, I had to tell her because my granddad it's kind of a weird story, but we were on vacation at the beach. Okay. My granddad tells me, um, her friend has died, you need to tell her. I'm like, I gotta tell her? And then I go up and tell her, this is horrible news, right? And then as I start to tell her, I realize that there's a smile coming over my face. I don't know why, I didn't think it was funny. Because you were uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable that it, it translated into a smile. So what did I do? I just like, I hugged her so that she wouldn't see me. And like, so her head was back here and I was telling her like, I'm so sorry. Um, but and then, smiling. and then I was like, I could start laughing at any moment. Like this is horrible. What what type of person? It doesn't mean anything bad I? about you. It just means you were so uncomfortable. You shouldn't feel so and no, bad about yourself. The more I thought about it, the, I can more, relate to that. the more I wanted to laugh. I almost laughed at my grandmother's funeral. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm I, I was sad, but I, I was started thinking. I'm so sad, I'm so uncomfortable, I feel like people are looking at me and I started, feel like I started laughing. I think it's just a human uncomfortable reaction. So. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, well, unless we're who, just both really bad. So who's bad. gonna give us advice? Well, I'm gonna give you advice. Cause, Cause my advice is just hug the person so they don't see your face. Well, I wasn't on the beach. I wasn't on the <laughs> That's beach. That's the best that I came up with. I was with. in the pew. Now, like, but one of the tried and true things that a lot of actors do is they, if they have fingernails, they'll take and dig into their palm and actually to the point of bleeding. But what I have taken to do is I have something I call freeze face that I've never laughed while making this face. <laughs> Are you serious? I've never try, seen try you. Try to make me laugh. Like, well, I just can't make you laugh that bad. I'm tickling. I can't laugh like this. I mean, I may look stupid, but I will not laugh. I would rather freeze laugh. Freeze face, just do it. <laughs> I see. I laughed when I came out. <laughs> you laugh. You made yourself no, no, laugh look. by looking at the freeze face. I can't laugh now. It's ridiculous. You look like a human vacuum cleaner. Like it's <laughs> like grimace. My like a grimace. So, so, all right. So, so there, there are two uh, flowers of advice. Um, choose which one you want. Okay. Now it's time to visit another weird website in a segment we call "The Internet Is a Weird Place." Uh, thanks to our friends over at Squarespace. This week's site is designed to help you get out of any emergency that you might find yourself in. Yes, um, it's called emergencyyodel.com and let's see, if we go to the site, you'll see it's it's elegantly simple. In yeah. case of emergency, push here. And let's just say it's an emergency right push now, there, even Link. though it's not, and I'm gonna push here. That's a good yodel. It's advanced. And then if you push it multiple times, it will stack the yodel. So like if you're at wrong, if you're you got in, an email. Oh no, I got an email. It's an emergency. It'll stack. Again. Again. It's like a bunch of yodlers. Again. More. Faster. Release. 
it's like an it's like a, a choir in the Alps. Whatever problem, whatever problem you were having is just instantly erased. Um, I think this is great because this brings something um, to all people via a website that I've experienced for um, years, well okay, for weeks now, um, which is whenever I get into an emergency in real life, I actually yodel because that is the optimal way to get out of said emergency. Yeah, I've noticed this. Uh, what he's been doing for the past couple of weeks is every time he's in an uncomfortable situation, uh, or accused of something, he just yodels his way out of it, and it's really frustrating to me so much so that I actually docu have been documenting our lives for the past couple of weeks uh, because I've been frustrated with it. So you can all see it, Mythical Beast. Here it is. Who broke this antique clock that I always use to know what time it is? Who took a bite out of the ham sandwich I had set aside for myself to enjoy? Oh, I was gonna play the blues, but who broke off the top of my guitar? Who pulled all the tape out of my favorite VHS movie, Titanic? So you gonna keep doing that? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, I see how it is. All right, guys, we want you to continue to share uh, the weirdest websites that you know of on the internet with us at the internet is a weird place .com. Click on submit a site. Of course, if we pick yours, we will give you credit on the show. And you can win a limited edition The Internet is a Weird Place t-shirt by designing and building your own weird website with Squarespace. Last month's theme was Hero, and the winner is Kevin Judd. That's kevin-judd.squarespace.com. Congratulations, Kevin, enjoy the shirt. Now it is a new month, which means a new theme, and this theme is music. So uh, to win a t-shirt, go over to the internet is a weird place .com, click on make your own website, music theme this time. You'll get a free trial of Squarespace and 10% off the creation of your own website. And remember, after your site is complete, go back and click on submit a site for it to be entered into the monthly contest. And now let's answer another bad habit question. Jamie Woods asks, if I wanted to get a bad habit, which bad habit would be the least bad? That thing that people do when they crack their neck, when they're like trying to seem like they're athletic. Like. I actually do that sometimes too. You trying to seem athletic? No, it just feels good, but. Oh, you did it. Yeah, I did it. I did it. <laughs> I told you, I do it sometimes, it feels good. Now, Rule Mafazi asks, how to stop someone's bad habit of eating their own boogers? Now, Rule Mafuzi, uh, the uh, best way to answer this question is to understand the science of eating boogers. So it's time for another edition of Amazingly, Amazingly Amazing, Amazing Science. Science. What happens when you eat your boogers? Well, boogers are created when the thin layer of mucus in your nasal cavity traps all the nasty bacteria, dirt, and dust that you breathe in to keep them from entering your lungs. When you eat those boogers, you're introducing a small amount of microbes into your body. Some scientists think this can actually improve your immune system. Think of it this way. Your nose is like a bathtub, and your boogers are the hair that gets caught in that little grate in the drain. And just like those boogers, when you see that hair in the drain, you just have to dig your finger in there and eat it. Soon you discover that eating the hair makes you stronger because you're absorbing the power of the people the hair has come from. But eventually you want more than just the power from your roommate Chester's chest hair clippings. You want the powers of the hair that got through the grate. So you borrow the jackhammer that Chester keeps in his room for no apparent reason and you drill through the bottom of the bathtub and down and down and down until you reach the sewers. There you encounter a cornucopia of quaffs, shaved off sideburns, unwanted underarm hair, freshly mowed mustache. You even snack on the shedded hair of sewer animals, all the while gaining the hair powers of your victims or donors. 
All of a sudden, you come upon a swirling, seething mass of rats with their tails intertwined to the point that they've fused together. That's right, you're face to face with the Rat King. A raging battle ensues, but lucky for you, some of the hair that you've been eating came from the rodent lord himself. Wielding the Rat King's rat powers, you sprout fangs and devour the beast whole. You then take your rightful place on the rat throne. So, next time you think about eating your boogers, do it before someone else dethrones the Rat King and becomes the overlord of the underworld. This has been Amazingly, Amazingly Amazing, Amazing Science. Science. So don't not eat your own boogers. Chow down. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode and thanks to you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You know what time it is. It's Ginger Holiday from Get all mythical to out at rentlink.com slash store. Look at that. We got a hat. We got a mug. We, we got, got a hoodie. Heads. We got a shirt. Hoodie. And you'll be happy if you buy it. <laughs> also, click through to Good Mythical Bar. We're going to open some mail with Jen, and we've got this Brunei robe that we're going to put on. We're going to look great. Two horses in the Kentucky Derby. Hey. hey. <laughs> Unexpected misfortune. Nice to meet you. Hey, Ed. Oh. You got uh, fingers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have a hoof. I'm kind of dainty in the way that I shake. <laughs> Unexpected fortune. I was expecting a fist bump. You were unexpecting a misfortune. <laughs> <laughs> And it's dramatically lit, and it's it's special, and it, it makes me feel special that you'll send us special stuff. I just go in there and sit with the things.